Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 16, Chapter 2, Interviews, Part 14. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the Tensura light novel. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now that I knew I was strong, I decided to see how I compared to Veldora. Name, Veldora Tempest. Existence value, 88,126,579. Race, Supreme Chaos Spirit, True Dragon. Grace, Blessing of Fertility, Storm Protection. Title, Storm Dragon. Magic, True Dragon Magic. Skill, New Intrinsic Skill, Dragon Spirit Hockey, Universal Shapeshift, Universal Perception. Ultimate Skill. Chaos King Nyarlathotep. New Resistance. Physical Attack Nullification. Abnormal Condition Nullification. Natural Effects Nullification. Mental Attack Nullification. Holy Demonic Attack Resistance. This was Veldora's current situation. His resistances were perfect, which goes without saying, but what stood out most was how much his existence value was worth. Still, when I looked at the value, I laughed instead of being surprised. He made a mistake when he tried to figure out the value. Just recently, after dinner, it had happened. I just got done talking to Ultima, so I tried to leave right away. But Veldora interrupted me. Kuahahaha. Rimuru, I know that you and Benamaru and the others are talking to each other one on one. I also have a lot of time on my hands right now, ah? I'm busy. Sorry, but I'm busy right now. I'll play with you when I'm done. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your interview with me. Huh? It wasn't necessary to talk to Veldora. After all, Veldora was not my subordinate, and when I really wanted to, I could have simply asked Seal about it. No, we always talk to each other, so an interview isn't necessary, right? What? Don't say things that are so sad. You're right. You should know that Master and I are lonely. Ramirez herself joined in. But really, we do see each other all the time, even if they say that. I too wanted to play with the Avatar core, but I had to focus on my work. First of all, we were in a war at the time. Just that Feldway and his co-workers' whereabouts were still unknown, so I could get some rest. At the very least, we couldn't mess around until we were ready to catch them. Don't be rude. Once everything is in order, no, I already told you that wasn't it. I've gotten stronger, and I want to show off to you. I know you're busy, but what's the harm in spending a few minutes with me? You're right, you're right. You are the only one who can measure the existence values accurately, so I want you to come with us for a while. Hum. In other words, I have been hiding my existence value since Ramirez measured it. I'm trying to show you that. Hum. That's completely impossible. It's true that we can't measure the numbers too precisely, but we can't make it up. I see. In other words, I was in a stupid argument. When things get this bad, these guys don't care what anyone says. It would be simpler to just follow their lead rather than trying to persuade them. All right, all right. So, let's go to the control room. With that, we could start to figure out how much Veldora was worth. The measuring tools were connected to the monitors all over the labyrinth, and they were run by a control panel in the control room. Seal could sync up with the labyrinth itself, so no matter where it was, it could take measurements. This was a secret. We went to the control room because of this. We got right to work because I didn't have much time. The value of Master's existence is 88 million. It's really cool, but Master says it's higher. I want Rimuru to tell him to stop being so proud of himself. In fact, it was worth more than anyone could imagine. Even a million class, saint, couldn't win, even though they aren't average. So, were those figures right? Yes. Veldora's existence value is certainly 88,126,579. They were nearly the same. If the value was too high, the machine wouldn't work as well, but it was still able to measure people who tried to enter the labyrinth or were already there. Still, if Veldora really was able to make up the numbers, it would show that the system was broken. This was a problem that couldn't be ignored, so it was important to look into it. I was surprised that this trip didn't turn out to be a complete waste of time. Now, everything depended on whether Veldora could fake the numbers or not. I counted 88.12 million, so it's pretty close. So, are the values going to keep going up from here? Or will we not measure them enough? In either case, I needed to know the plan so I could think of ways to stop it. Veldora was prompted to participate by me. Veldora began to take off his coat with a proud look on his face. No way, how could that be? Even though I wasn't sweating, it felt like a cold sweat had come down on my body. 
Veldora started to laugh really hard. Kuahahaha. Take a good look. This is my real strength. His coat hit the floor with a thud, and Veldora's wristbands rolled off with another thud, shaking the ground. Hey, even if you take off your heavy clothes, the numbers won't go up. He might have been feeling warm. Here, mostly energy levels are measured, which have nothing to do with direct fighting power. But Veldora, Kuahahaha, what do you think? Now, try to measure. It doesn't matter if it breaks. This is really embarrassing. Once I realized what he was trying to do, I couldn't help but feel sorry for Veldora. I've measured it, and the values haven't changed even a little bit. Nothing has changed. You know, Veldora, Master, after everything, it's still 88 million? Oh, Ramirez was so blunt and got right to the point. Don't be a fool. What's the truth, Rimuru? Have my numbers doubled, or what? I felt sorry for Veldora. You could hide it if it was Yuki, but existence values are very different. Then I carefully told Veldora that these values weren't a measure of combat power like they were in the manga. Instead, they were a measure of energy. Once Veldora realized what he had done wrong, he turned bright red. Well, it still makes me laugh, but there was no question that his number of magicules was very high. There is no way to harm him other than with attacks at the highest level, even if I examine it carefully. Also, Veldora's skill was also extremely troublesome. His skill changed into Chaos King Nyarlathotep thanks to CL's change, which included, Thought Acceleration, All of Creation, Probability Manipulation, Analyze and Assess, Parallel Existence, Spacetime Manipulation, Investigation of Truth, and Multidimensional Barrier. After integrating SEAL, the practical convenience was greatly improved. Veldora himself had attained parallel existence. I know from the fight with Velgrind that this was a problem, but Veldora also has probability manipulation, which makes him seem really immortal. First, he was immortal as long as I didn't die. Because Veldora's core was still in me, I could remember and feel what he did. If he could also do something called split body, it might be impossible to kill him. I laughed about the mistake with the existence value, but he was a good person to have on our side. Well, Veldora's existence value was more than 10 times higher than mine, and even if I tried to fight him, I probably wouldn't win. I did have some doubts, though. I not only beat Velgrind, but I also predated her. At that time, Velgrind's existence was worth 26.87 million. About 30% of them were in recovery at the time I predated a little over 50% of them. That 30% seemed to be attempting to switch back to the side I came from. As expected of Seal, nothing was missed. So, getting back to the point, I thought that my existence value was a little low for how much energy I had used. Well, I still think I'm strong enough and I still think it's important to have good fighting sense, but I'm still slightly concerned. As for that, it makes sense. Before using true dragon release, the predated energy was turned into the master's flesh and blood. What does that mean, then? In other words, master's maximum existence value is right when the values of Veldora's and Velgrin's existence values are added together. What? I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. In other words, I would only be able to show how powerful I was when I used true dragon release. Hum? But since the output is the same, it could be the same even if the energy goes up. Even Velgrind might have changed to increasing the number because the limit had been reached. There was no limit to how much the power could grow, but it didn't matter if it didn't hit the target. When you reach the level where you can break stars, it gets harder to control your power. I was sure that trying to get the most power was a waste of time. As a point of reference, I predated Velgrind, whose existence value at the time was approximated to be 49,829,987. CL's calculations showed that it should have been almost perfect, but now, her existence value had gone up even more. Name. Velgrind. Existence value. 74,350,087. Race. Supreme Chaos Spirit. True Dragon. Grace. Scorch Affection. Title. Scorch Dragon. Magic. True Dragon Magic. Skill. New Intrinsic Skill. Dragon Spirit Hockey. Universal Shapeshift. Universal Perception. Ultimate Skill. Divine Flame King Kathuga. New Resistance. Physical Attack Nullification. Abnormal Condition Nullification. Natural Effects Nullification. Mental Attack Nullification. Holy Demonic Attack Resistance. Even though Seal had changed it, the power was still the same, but I'm sure Velgrind had mastered it. The Divine Flame of King Kathuga contained. Thought acceleration, parallel existence, thermal excitation, spacetime manipulation, dimension leap, and multidimensional barrier. Also, I had only been apart from Velgrind for a few days, so I didn't know what kind of experience she had gained. I was thinking about what to say to her because I was going to see her tomorrow. 
I was worried about what would happen if I upset her, so I sought to prevent a secondary conflict in this way. Seal was able to confirm the status of the person through personal interviews.